Okay, so we're here in beautiful Mainz in Germany. Um, we're here to talk about heparin, but before that, can you tell me a little bit about, about PSS? You've been working there for 16 years, I think you said. Yeah, I, re I started in 2000 to work for PSS. I'm a polymer chemist. And what PSS is doing that we are focusing on the needs for liquid chromatography of all macromolecules of polymers, biopolymers, proteins. Okay. And we try to develop solutions that are easy to use for the people in an analytical lab who are doing liquid chromatography of macromolecules. Okay, so how does that fit in with, with heparin? I think you mentioned you know, the, the two sets of different regulations, one for sort of Europe and one for US. Can you tell me a little bit about, about heparin and, and how the regulations impact on its manufacture? Of course, uh, heparin is a macromolecule and all macromolecules have a molecular weight distribution. Uh, heparins are used in medicine and of course we need a very good quality control sure. for, these, for these kind of molecules. And what we need to measure, especially for low molecular weight heparins, is the molecular weight distribution. And there are criteria that the molecular weight um, average, the MW, should be below 8000 Dalton. And also there are a lot of um, other parameters which we need to be met to be sure that all fractions of the molecule meet the right molecular weight okay. range. So can you tell me a little bit about how the, the two regulations differ? Mm -hmm. the, what is the same is that both methods require size exclusion chromatography or GPC to measure the molecular weight sure. distribution. Uh, the way they are different are in how to calibrate the GPC SEC system. Both techniques use a very nice approach where you just need one reference material, okay. but they're very different in what you need from an experimental standpoint and how to create the calibration itself. Okay, so can you maybe walk us through those two mm -hmm. different approaches? What you need for the EP is that you just need a size exclusion chromatography instrument with two detectors. You mm -hmm. need a refractive index detector and a UV detector because the uh, EP, the European Pharmacopeia, uses a reference as materials, a heparin, which has been especially modified so that it has a UV detectable end group. So what we'll have is that we'll have a UV trace and an RI trace and both traces will look different and from these differences we can do an end group analysis and we can just construct a calibration curve by that. Okay. There's an equation given for that in the EP which was a kind of problem for many users how to do that right. but uh, that's why where we came in where we developed the software solution for that to automatically calibrate from a an UV and an RI trace okay. and from the differences in that and for the USP, you also need a size, and, uh, size exclusion chromatography system, but in that case you only need a refractive index detector, you don't need a UV detector. Um, also there are some small differences in the columns you are using, in the um, stationary phase material and also in the mobile phase, but that's normally it's doable on the same instrument. Um, you can use the same equipment to do EP and USP as long as you have a UV detector and a refractive index detector and a matching software for that. Sure, so can you take us through, you know, we've, we've run our sample through the, through the system. What sort of data would we expect to see and, and how do we, you know, move that to a, to a conclusion? Mm -hmm. um, what we would do for both um, pharmacopeias is that we would run the calibration sample first in case of um, EP we would get two traces. We would see a red trace which would be belong to the UV signal, to the end group, so we would detect each single chain just one time. For the second detector for the refractive index, we get a green trace where we see um, each repetition unit. So we see two signals and uh, the important point now is to, to get the calibration curve out of these two traces. So what you do is an end group analysis and you then can construct a GPC SEC calibration curve from just one sample right. and it's important to realize that it's that you're really getting accurate molecular weights out of this because you are using heparin to calibrate and later heparin will be analyzed and then you will have this calibration curve and after that you do have your molecular weight distribution. You will see here that the MW is below 8000 mm -hmm. showing that this sample uh, fulfills the quality control criteria and then you can set different parameters and look at the fraction at a certain molecular weight and can then identify that this is also according to the specifications that we need to meet. Sure. For the USP it's a little bit um, different. You also have just one reference material, one heparin you are measuring 
and you just run the sample with your refractive index detector and then you can just use that one sample with a table that you will get um, with the reference material to construct one calibration curve. Right. And then you analyze your samples recording to that calibration curve and you get your data, your molecular weight distribution. And what is quite important to realize is that you really need a software that provides right. a true molecular weight distribution because many HPLC softwares they calculate molecular weight averages but they are not converting a chrom to chrom into a molar mass distribution but they um, just replace illusion by volume by molecular weight and that's it but this is not what is working when you need to measure the special parameters for heparin analysis. Right.